Hi, I'm Pat Kiernan. Glad you could be with us for today's edition of Pat's Papers. We go through the nation's newspapers to bring you the highlights. Here's our top story today. They are celebrating in Florida. Columnist Greg Cody in the Miami Herald says the BCS championship game lived up to the hype. Florida defeated Oklahoma 24-14 last night at Dolphin Stadium in Miami, claiming the BCS College Football Championship. The Herald says it was a game that rivaled the best in excitement, intensity, and sizzle. The Tampa Tribune devotes its entire front page to a single picture of quarterback Tim Tebow contemplating his team's victory. Of course, there is a loser for every winner. The Tulsa World says the Sooners just haven't been able to get it together for the big games. Scientists are puzzled with the way the flu season is shaping up. The New York Times reports the major strain of flu this year is 99% resistant to the main antiviral drug Tamiflu. The experts believe it's simply bad luck the, the way the uh, flu developed this year, which is not as scary as the alternative. The initial fear was that the flu had quickly adapted and become drug resistant. A lot of papers have front page coverage of the crisis in Gaza. The Buffalo News runs the AP story that leads with the UN stopping food shipments and the Red Cross accusing Israel of blocking medical assistance. And a, a sidebar story on the front page of the New York Times on this topic profiles an emergency room in Gaza City saying it is a lesson in the way ordinary people are squeezed between suicidal fighters and a military behemoth. The New York Daily News particularly critical today of the UN Security Council's decision last night to ask for an immediate ceasefire. The editorial page slams the US for disgraceful complicity with the Security Council. The resolution on Israel, according to the editorial, is a betrayal of Israel that blocks it from its goal of basic security. The Washington Post front page looks at how Treasury Secretary nominee Tim Geithner is planning an urgent overhaul of the Wall Street bailout plan passed by Congress in the fall. The idea is to extend the reach of the plan so it is seen as more Main Street. There's still $350 billion in rescue money that has not been released to the administration, so an overhaul would help with the release of that money. Well, we're in Washington, page C1 of the Post, the style section this morning, with a story about the popularity of the Lincoln Town Car for Inauguration Week. There will not be nearly enough of them to go around. The Post story says the town car is the ideal compromise for a dignitary who wants to step it up from a taxi, but doesn't want to show up in a big limo. The story says the town car projects power, but not intrusiveness. A story widely reported out of Washington, on the front page of the LA Times today, President-elect Barack Obama is among those saying the mandatory switch to digital TV should be postponed. A lot of people have been complaining about the crisis that is about to develop if some Americans are unable to watch TV over the air. I'm not really convinced it, it's uh, to crisis point. It's not going to kill people to read a few books while they work it out, but it is clear there are problems with the transition schedule for digital TV. The Chicago Tribune looking ahead to today's installment of The View on ABC. The network will air a taped interview with Tom Cruise in which he talks about the death of John Travolta's 16-year-old son, Jet. Barbara Walters questioned a defensive Cruise about Scientology, which he and the Travoltas follow. Cruise denies that the church discourages conventional medical care. And one more note on this story from the New York Daily News, a photo that makes you stop when you get to the story, for sure. John Travolta's love of his airplanes has been well reported, but it, it's still uh, pretty impressive to have a jet parked in your backyard. I love the photo on the front page of the Cincinnati Enquirer today. It shows Bernice Gallego of Fresno, California. She runs a collectible shop there. She had no idea that the Cincinnati Reds baseball card that came in was one of the first ever made. She initially put the 1869 card on eBay asking for $10. Then she realized what it was worth or somewhat what it was worth and pulled it from the bidding. It could be valued at about $20,000. From Bridgeport, Connecticut, the Connecticut Post, a story about technology many companies and cities are trying to install. The first batch of GPS tracking devices was put in for Bridgeport City snow plows and garbage trucks. The city says it can dispatch trucks more efficiently when it knows where they are. Of course, the other side of this is that the boss can also keep an eye on drivers to see if they're slackers. The mayor of Bridgeport's trying to head off some of the criticism by having one of the trackers installed in his city car, too. On the topic of cars, the Albany Times Union says the recession has been good for somebody. Mechanics are seeing an increase in business as people try to extend the life of cars they might have replaced in better times. One Honda manager says people seem more willing to invest in preventative maintenance now that they know they'll be driving the same car for a few years. In the Dayton Daily News, Applebee's says, no, we're not giving away $50. An internet hoax has been making the rounds. Applebee's says 
uh, that the $50 credit for anyone in a rural community did not ever exist as a promotion. It's turned down 50,000 requests for that $50 credit. The Kansas City Star, among the papers looking ahead to the award show season, the Golden Globes will be handed out on Sunday. The Star delivers a prize primer today, recapping the voting process for the major award ceremonies. The story notes those who decide the Golden Globe winners has just 83 members making this decision. Uh, there's not enough time to get into the details, but the New York Times has a really informative report this morning about the avalanche season in the western states and why it has been so deadly so far this year. The key is the way the snowpack developed in the early part of the winter. A layer of ice has prevented snow from packing in tight in many areas, and uh, that makes the areas more prone to avalanche than they otherwise would be. We finished with two stories from the Times. You, you couldn't buy an endorsement better than this one. In fact, if you were going to buy the endorsement, you would pay 25 to $50 million, according to some experts. Barack Obama's public fight to keep his BlackBerry sends a powerful advertising message. He says he can't get along without it, so you should probably have one, too. And speaking of can't get along without it, the Times says the sold-out Amazon Kindle is fetching a price tag used of double what it costs new. The story predicts the Kindle will be to Amazon what the iPod has been to Apple. People still trying to get their hands on that electronic book reader, and it will be back in stock soon. And that's our look at what's in the nation's newspapers this morning. I'm Pat Curtin. Thanks for joining us. Go to patspapers.com, where you will find the complete list of all of the stories we featured today, along with links to the individual newspaper websites.